people online and even as they watch me online and even the families who are missing this afternoon watch me online rejoice in the presence of god rejoice in the presence of god rejoice in the presence of god because all week seven days i know you've been at work you've been doing many things for the family but let me tell you one thing this one hour or two hours you spend in the presence of god will make a big difference and those who believed said those who believed said this is a song i like very much since you know my childhood i used to sing i think most of you know this song come and go with me to my father's house because this is the father's house and each one of you you know when you go to your own house and Sir Anne wants to go to South Africa as soon as the COVID restrictions are taken down. Most of us want to go back to overseas and, you know, see our own places. When you enter your own, own house, you know, the feel is different. The love is different. Nothing can describe that feeling of going to your own home. And the Word of God says, this is the house of God. This is where we come to meet our Creator. And He says, my presence is always in His house. And those of you who know the song can sing with me so that I can see some happy faces this evening. Can I have D with it? Come and go with me to my father's house, to my father's house, to my father's house. You can clap. Come and go with me to my father's house. There is joy, joy, joy. Very simple. Come and go with me to my father's house. To my father's house, to my father's house, come and go with me. To my father's house, there is joy, joy, joy. Come and go with me. To my father's house, to my father's house, to my father's house, come and go with me. To my father's house, there is peace, peace, peace. There is joy, joy, joy. There is healing, healing, healing. There is righteousness, righteousness, and righteousness. There is victory, victory, and victory. There is victory. Victory, victory for one last time. Let's sing together. Come and go with me to my father's house, to my father's house, to my father's house. Come and go with me to my father's house. There is joy, joy, joy. As the apostles say, which I always keep saying. We are not here to preach to you cleverly devised fables. The Lord is here with us this evening. We preach to you what we have seen, what we have touched, and what we have experienced in our lives. Word of God. If you have got your Bibles, if you can open the book of Isaiah, chapter 8, verse 11. Book of Isaiah, chapter 8, verse 11. If you've got your Bibles, open your Bibles, please. For in this way the Lord spoke to me with his strong hand and instructed me not to walk in the way of these people behaving as they do the lord was speaking to prophet isaiah and i'm going to give you the background of why the lord was saying this in a particular incident in that at that point of time in the history of mankind god was speaking to isaiah and saying just like the vaihan said we are not like the worldly people we are not supposed to be like the worldly people how they fear everything else the lord was speaking to isaiah and said for in this way the lord spoke to me with his strong hand upon me and instructed me not to walk in the way of these people or behaving as they do. Just to give you a background of why the Lord was speaking to Isaiah this way. If you go to book of Isaiah chapter 7 verse 1. Book of Isaiah chapter 7 verse 1. The Bible says, Now it came to pass in the days of Ahaz. I'm not going to read the whole of it. In the end of the verse the Bible says, There were two kings who came against Ahaz. The king of Syria and the king of Israel. And next was Dean. And the next one, please. And the Lord said, when this news came to Ahaz, the Lord said, Take care and be calm. Do not fear and be weak-hearted because of these two 
kings i'm just going to make it very simple because usually when i preach i try to make it very easy for you to understand so here what's happening is the bible says there were two kings coming against king ahaz king of israel and king of syria and the bible says in chapter 7 verse 2 when ahaz heard this i want to listen to this very carefully ahaz and his people trembled as the trees of the forest tremble in the wind chapter 7 verse 2 when the news came to ahaz the bible says his heart was trembling with fear and most of you can understand or relate to how ahaz should have felt he is a mighty king of a nation but they're not just one but two kings were coming against him and his heart was having so much of fear the bible gives a beautiful description just like the trees sway when the wind comes you know when there's a mighty storm a mighty wind you know how the trees move unstable don't know what's going to happen next in the same way the heart of ahaz was sinking down was moving so much with anxiety not knowing what's going to happen and in most of our lives when a news comes to us because two things will happen in our lives as well one is the king of israel one is the king of syria the king of syria is from the gentiles he's a non jewish person but the king of israel is supposed to be god's chosen king but he was not doing what god wanted him to do in each one of our lives you'll have attack from two people or two categories one will always be the secular people at your workplace non christians your friends who look to your life and think what's wrong with this person or try to always put you down in their own worldly ways so king of syria will always come upon you at the same time king of israel supposed to be god's people supposed to be god's chosen ones and most of the churches you go to most of the christian communities you go to you hear the same story the biggest hurts the biggest challenges the biggest criticisms and the crucifixion came from within the church and when those two attacks come upon you on one side you're dealing with the world on one side you're dealing with the church god's people your heart is going to melt your heart is going to sway because for example for those of you who serve in the ministry or those of you who want to lead a godly life understand exactly what i'm trying to say as i said so sir shimrit wanted to start sunday school today but no kids appear no kids appear today there's rain outside on one side it's very hard to live a godly life and we have decided to live a godly life and once you take that step the journey becomes difficult on one side king of syria on the other side king of israel both of them are coming to attack this person king ahaz and his heart is sinking though he is a king though he had an army his heart was sinking to each one of you under the sound of your sound of my voice you can relate to many circumstances many situations where you and i were in a similar situation when the attack came from both directions both from godly people and ungodly people because people judge very easily people pass commentary very easily in that sense you know christians pass comments more easily than the non christians in one sense secular people are quite measured in the way they speak but because we know the word of god because we think we know how god works as brother vihan was sharing about ephesians the scripture i have been praying over the scripture for months together a spirit of wisdom and revelation a spirit of wisdom and revelation but people think we know about god and so much of judgmental attitude so much of commentary so much of criticism against individuals against families and you're listening to that and your heart is sinking your heart is sinking and then the lord sent his prophet isaiah to this king ahaz and says in verse number 4 the lord says take care and be calm do not fear and be weak hearted because of this kings this is an amplified version take care and be calm do not fear and be weak hearted because of this kings any time when the attacks come up on your life any time when you come up come against these struggles and challenges from these kinds of people the first thing the lord tells his people is if you are a godly person a righteous person take care this is a very simple colloquial language take care and be calm do not fear and be weak hearted because of this kings the best example would be daniel in the bible It is one thing to listen to the stories it's another thing to live those lives because he was in a very high position and when he was given a, 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 an edict by the king that you're going to die for serving the god of israel think about this picture it is not a demotion the king is not saying you're going to be demoted the king is not saying leave the country and go king is not saying i'm going to have some penalty for what you're doing your life is going to come to an end each time when the devil attacks our lives it comes through people the agenda is the same to still to steal kill and destroy the agenda never changes because these people who were against daniel could have said to the king this man is not doing what you want him to do so let him be demoted 
or give him a penalty give him a fine no the devil is never happy with little things in your life he wants to see the end of you end of your family end of your children and then the, the rule comes that the, the daniel is supposed to put in the den of lions and what happens in the den of lions is going to be a feast to the, to the lions but the bible says he was very calm he was very calm if you read the book of daniel he did not even those days there were no mobile phones no those days there was no communication he was away from his family no one along with him but then the bible says he was very calm as was his usual business practice in religiously he went to his room opened the doors of his window and looked into jerusalem and he prayed as an influential person he could have asked his friends because let's say if you are a high end manager in your job you'll have some friends to contact and you can take some influence and ask them what can i do can you help me in this are any close connections to the king can you recommend to the king and tell the king that this is a scheme against me he didn't do a single thing when the bible when the bible says when, when the word of god says take care and be calm that is how it looks like but we we follow a different thing we go to the room we pray once the prayer is over we come out right the prayer is left to god to answer then we are on the phone to everyone in the vicinity to everyone in the family back overseas to everyone will share what we are going through but when the bible says take care and be calm the best example is daniel in the book of daniel when he knew he's not just losing his job he's losing his life but he was so calm when the holy spirit is with you when you're walking with the lord that calmness comes but then i got you to listen to this very carefully if you go to verse 9 the lord was speaking to ahaz through prophet isaiah and says if you will not believe be you will not be established because god was speaking to king ahaz through prophet isaiah and saying yes i know these two kings are coming against you but these two kings will be destroyed don't worry about them both these kings will be destroyed don't worry about them but then he knew the heart of ahaz and he told ahaz you got to believe this my son you got to believe this my daughter unless you believe you will not be established because on one side his heart was swaying like the moving trees unstable but lord is saying for you to be established you got to believe the prophetic word coming through my prophet and every word in the scriptures i say is a prophetic word over our lives when the lord says regarding your situation regarding your husband regarding your wife regarding your children regarding your career regarding your finances regarding your health more than anything else as we spoke or heard from the vihan the salvation is given us when he says it it is said and done god says it is settled once for all and he says unless you believe you will not see it i want to hear this unless you believe you will not see it established yes pastor daniel we had great prophetic words yes pastor daniel great man of god prayed over me yes pastor daniel we know the word of god it's one thing to know other thing to believe believe which you heard in the word of exhortation do you believe do you believe do you believe it is it is very very hard to believe because king ahaz knows what he is facing two kings king of syria mighty king king of israel a mighty king it is very easy for god to say be calm be quiet it is tough pastor daniel you don't know what i'm going through you don't know what i'm facing from my husband many times when i pray for families people say you don't understand you haven't gone through what we have gone through but i politely and gently say you haven't seen my life you haven't gone through what i've gone through because for the sake of the ministry the lord takes us through so much of pain and agony so that we can minister to people people tell you you don't know my story pastor daniel you don't know what we are going through in life god it's easy for god to say be quiet but think about telling him do not worry about these two kings but then it will come to pass very important many people of god miss the deliverance of god many people of god miss the blessings of god because they know who god is but they don't believe what he can do in their lives years have passed by months have passed by we're still playing religion we're still praying playing religion and in these end times as we see days are coming near for the creation to end the beginning of the end still my heart breaks when i see people playing religion how long do you want to play religion if the god of israel is for real at least for once in life serve him trust him and see his acts in your life if the god of the bible is for real at least once try him in your life he says when he says be quiet be quiet and he will act on your behalf and when this word came to ahaz and the lord said unless you believe unless you believe you will not be established and i want you to repeat with all your heart open your bibles isaiah chapter 7 verse 9 
Isaiah chapter 7 verse 9 the last part you can repeat after me if you will not believe if you will not believe and trust in God and his message be assured that you will not be established we are a people who are rooted in the word of God who are rooted in the word of God yes miracles happen yes prophetic words come yes deliverance happens but at the end of the day we serve a God who exalted his word above his name the Bible says he exalted his word above his name and he says if you believe me you will be established and I want to encourage everyone under the sound of my voice and everyone who's watching me online if you had a word from the Lord maybe 10 years back five years back regarding any situation of your life the Lord is speaking to you once again this evening reminding you the Bible says he's a God who doesn't change Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today and forever and he says the word he has given you regarding your family, regarding your children, regarding anything concerning your life. He says, take care and be quiet. And he will establish you once you believe in his word. And once this part was done by Isaiah, think about Isaiah. You know, it's very tough to be a servant of God. He goes to the king. And always we are supposed to give very easy solutions for difficult problems. Now you go to your doctor, you expect only healing, medical healing. You go to your counselor, you expect only counseling. You go to an engineer, you expect only a building to be built. But you come to a pastor, you expect solution for everything. Every problem you want, the pastor to give you an answer. So tough to be a servant of God, a genuine servant of God. Isaiah comes with the word of God. And Isaiah is speaking, is speaking to King Ahaz and saying, don't worry, King. God is going to deliver you. God is going to you know, give, you the, give you the victory with these two kings. But then what happens here? If you look at the book of Isaiah, chapter 8, verse 1, the Bible says, Now Isaiah's life is put into test. Moreover, the Lord said unto me, Take a great large tablet for public display and write on it in ordinary characters belonging to Meher Shalal Hasbaz. So one side you have seen Prophet Isaiah speaking to King Ahaz, was encouraging him, gave a prophetic word from the Lord. And we think Isaiah's story is over. We think, you know, once we have done something for the Lord, my story is over my part is over the journey with God never ends that is where people of God miss his blessing the journey with God doesn't end on a Sunday and I tell the people of God every time your spiritual journey doesn't start on a Sunday throughout the week what you experience is who you are and Isaiah thought he went to King Ahaz delivered the message and his part was over but actually something more important is starting here and now the Lord is telling Isaiah take yourself a large ta tablet like a large stone or a paper for public display and write on it in ordinary characters belonging to Maher Shalal Hash Baz. Have you heard this name before? This is for your own reference. This is the longest name in the Bible. If anyone puts you in a Bible quiz, if anyone asks you a question, what is the longest name in the Bible or the biggest name in the Bible? This is the name. Maher Shalal Hash Baz. It's very hard to pronounce as well. Why does the Lord say this to Isaiah? Let's go scripture by scripture, word by word. And the Bible says, verse number two, I will get faithful witness to attest for me, Uriah and Zechariah. And so I approached my wife, the prophetess, and she conceived and gave birth to her son. And then the Lord said to me, name him Maher Shalal Hasbaz. For before the boy knows how to say my father or my mother, the riches of Damascus of Syria, and the spoil of Samaria of Israel will be carried away by the king of Assyria. Look, this is very deep here. The Lord is telling Isaiah to take a tablet first and write this name. You got to look, look at me for the next five minutes. The Lord is telling his prophet, take a tablet and write this name, Maher Sheral Hasbaz, not for private consumption, for public display. Just to give you a picture how it looks like. Let's say in your living room, in your hall, in your lounge room, we have all the decoration items all the beautiful looking decoration items so the Lord is saying get a big beautiful picture frame a big frame and on that name on that frame write Maher Shalal Hasbaz and keep it for display in your living room for public display and people come to your house the pretender comes to my house Pastor Daniel what is this and I'll be saying I don't know even myself I don't know the first instruction was just write Maher Shalal Hasbaz that's it the Lord didn't say anything else and then all the believers all the church comes to my house and they're asking me what does it mean and the pastor is saying sorry brother sorry sister I don't know what this means the Lord asked me to do it 
and Christians, very smart people. They know how to act. As I keep saying, there are good actors in the church than Hollywood and Bollywood. They'll go out of my house and they'll say, Pastor Daniel seems to be gone a bit insane. This, this is not our language. That is not our language. It's not Telugu, it's not Malayalam, it's not Kannada, it's not Tamil, it's not African, it's not Congolese, it's not English. What language is this? And he's saying this name and he's putting his name in the living room and he says he doesn't know God told him. And then all people go and become some social media. That Pastor Daniel is now, you know, gone a bit insane. Someone needs to go and correct him. Someone needs to teach him something. And then verse 2, the Lord says, once you do that, I'm going to send two people, a priest and a king. And they'll come and attest, you know, attestation. So certifying that you have done this. And the third verse, the Lord says, the Bible says that Isaiah had a son. And till that time, Isaiah had no clue why the Lord told him that name. And now the Lord says, that name which I told you nine months back, that name which I have given you nine months back, that name you got to put for your son. Can you imagine what Isaiah might have gone through? For nine months, this name is in the house. He doesn't know what it is about. His wife doesn't know what it is about. The church doesn't know what it is about. But that name is in the living room for public display. And once the son is born, then the Lord says, put that name for your son. And the meaning is, in simple language, the plunder. The plunder, which means, the Lord says, even before the son says, mommy or daddy, before the son speaks, King Ahaz is frightened, right? Let him have a sign. Even before your son speaks, King Ahaz will have such a victory that both Syria and Israel will be ruined by the king of Assyria. The God we serve is a God who gives tangible manifestations of his glory. It's not vagueness, it's not a gray area. As I keep saying, Bible we read is not philosophy and theology. If it doesn't make sense in your life, it's, it's time to stop studying the Bible because you're not on the right path. The Bible is stories from Genesis to Revelation of real life experiences of people with whom God walked, with whom God spoke. And if you and I in these end times, when the Lord is going to come back, still treat it like a religion, it's time to stop reading the Bible because of no use. The Bible has to be real in our lives. The Lord said, before that boy says mommy, before that boy says daddy, King Ahaz will have a sign. Both those kingdoms which are rising against Ahaz, they'll be ruined. But for that to pass, Isaiah had to go through a journey. I'm going somewhere tonight. If you are alert in the spirit, when the Lord wants to use you, when, when you want the Lord to work in your life, uh, you want it very easy. You want it very easy. Think about Isaiah. In Isaiah chapter 8 verse 11, that's when God says, do not be like other people. Do not be like the only people. Because I have called you with a different calling. Your life will be different. Your story will be different. Your journey will be different. Not for the world to understand. But you got to do what I called you to do. And connect this name to what the Lord said to Ahaz. You got to believe what I said. For Maher Shalal has passed to come to pass, for the Lord's prophecy to come to pass, Isaiah had to believe. His wife had to believe. Not for one day, not for two days, for nine months. If you can put yourself in that place, you'll understand how God works in people's lives. Because we want instant miracles. We want instant miracles, instant breakthroughs. No one wants to have a journey with the Lord. You know, if we, we, we find messages on uh, Facebook or YouTube and we're happy, watch to a sermon, we're happy. But the God we serve is a God who wants you to have a personal experience. When Brother Abi was asking in the beginning, Jesus was asking his disciples, who do you think I am? What do people think I am? And then who do you think I am? And Peter says, you know, you are the son of God. And he says, flesh and blood hasn't revealed this to you. Holy Spirit himself has revealed this to you. And it's my prayer this evening, each one of you, and the sound of my voice will have a revelation of who he is in your life of the journey he wants to take in your life time has come where each one of us need to have the longing to have a journey with him the journey won't be easy but it will be fruitful it will be a blessing and the bible says when this happened just like the lord said before the boy could speak exactly according to what the lord said both the nations the nation of syria and the king of israel both of them were ruined both of them were destroyed and the victory came to King Ahaz. And the first thing I want to tell you this evening, we got to live differently by fearing differently. Can you repeat after me? We got to live differently by fearing differently. What do you mean by saying by fearing differently? If you go to Isaiah chapter 8 verses 12 to 14, you are not to say it is a conspiracy in regard to all that these people call a conspiracy. 
and you are not to fear what they fear nor be in dread of it and listen to this carefully sense of god the lord is saying when he spoke to isaiah in chapter verse 11 he said do not be like the worldly people and then he's saying how he should be and he's telling isaiah you are a conspiracy in regard to all that these people call a conspiracy and you are not to fear what they fear nor be in dread of it listen to this carefully it is the lord of hosts whom you are to regard as holy and awesome he shall be your source of fear he shall be your source of dread not man the lord is saying this evening to each one of us stop fearing corona virus stop fearing about all the news you hear about virus stop fearing about every fear that comes into your mind for many people half the life they are spending in fear even before the reports come they have this feeling something is wrong in my body many people i pray for and i can tell you honestly even before they are sick they feel sick because in their mind they have concluded they are sick because people are very happy to go to a doctor and pay the fees and you know get diagnosed with something then to believe in the word of god and claim their healing and the bible says don't fear anything which means the word of god is saying worldly people fear non jewish people fear people who didn't know that time jehovah fear people who don't know jesus christ they fear jesus said don't fear to anyone who can touch your body your flesh and blood but only fear the one who can touch your soul and there's so much of fear when we see these masks you know on the face which we respect the government you know which we respect the guidelines we pray for the government but when these instructions came i thought the the lightning pace at which we reacted one case in perth immediately the perth is in lockdown for 5 days the pace at which we react in the same pace if the christians can react the moment sin enters your life they're closing down the whole city they're not worried about the economy or what's going to happen to the economy because it's do or die situation if each one of us react in the same way if anything which is not pleasing to the lord entering into our life is a complete shut down shut down your work shut down your family life go into your room and be on your knees that something is bothering you something is not right in your life with the lord can we do that we cannot we cannot be so complacent so easy going the lord is gracious he is merciful but the worldly people they are fearing a virus they are fearing a virus and closing the entire nation cities after cities irrespective of the impact on the economy for a for a virus that is not seen for a virus that will come and go they are so frightened so careful but in our lives when the, when, the, when the word of god says guard your heart guard your heart with the word of god not with the mask anything which is not pleasing to the lord the words you speak the thoughts you have your relationships your communications your conversations everything concerning your life you know and you know because the bible says your conscience will testify whether your life is right with the lord or not your pastor doesn't have to say a prophet doesn't have to say your conscience will testify at the end of the day whether your life is right with the lord or not can we take an immediate reaction like the worldly people do they're so fearful but the word of god is saying don't be like worldly people don't be like worldly people fearing about the worldly things but for the things of the heart prophet jeremiah says out of all things the heart of a man is the most wicked of all the heart of a man is desperately wicked did we ever think about our hearts did we ever think about how our lives are we are okay to please people we are okay to please social circles but if you react in the same way mark mcgowan has reacted to combat coronavirus our spiritual lives will be different our walk with the lord is different and the lord said do not fear like the worldly people the first thing we live differently by fearing differently our only fear is the fear of god once we have his fear there's no place for any other fear in our lives and people of god said people of god said if you have the fear of god in your life there's no place for any other fear any other fear but the moment you leave this place but the moment you leave this church this evening make a commitment in your heart no place for fear in my heart if god said it in the book of isaiah through his prophet isaiah don't be like worldly people don't be like worldly people he was very specific very specific very specific you are not to fear what they fear nor be in dread of it it is the lord of hosts whom you are to regard as holy and awesome he shall be your source of fear he shall be your source of dread and then he says he shall be a sanctuary to those who fear him if you fear him he will be your sanctuary he will be your temple he will be your ho- hope so we live differently by fearing differently the second thing we fear differently by hoping differently the hope is in him the rock of ages he is our sanctuary the bible says in the book of isaiah chapter 8 verse 13 the word of god says he shall be a sanctuary a sacred indestructible shelter for those who fear and trust him 
But for other people, the Bible says he'll be a stumbling block. Where is our hope this evening? Where is our hope this evening? When the world is full of fear, our hope is in him who will be our sanctuary. Who will be our sanctuary. Who will be our sanctuary, both here and even in the world to come. And I want to finish with this. And we hope differently, the last thing, by inquiring differently. We hope differently by inquiring differently. Why do I say that? If you go to the same book of Isaiah, I'm spoon, spoon feeding you tonight, same chapter. Chapter, of, I, chapter 8, verses 19 to 22. I'm going to read it for you. When the people, instead of trusting God, say to you, consult the mediums who try to talk to the dead and the soothsayers who chirp and whisper and mutter, should not a people consult their God? Should they consult the dead on behalf of the living? Direct those people to the law and to the testimony. If their teachings are not in accord with this word, it is because they have no dawn. They who consult mediums and soothsayers will pass through the land deeply distressed and hungry. And when they are hungry, they will become enraged and will curse their king and their God as they look upward. People are cursing God these days, as the Bible says. Then they will look to the earth. They will see only distress and darkness, the gloom of anguish, and they will be driven away into darkness and overwhelming night. These are the scriptures for the end times. Scriptures for the end times. The Lord has spoken through prophet Isaiah thousands of years back. And he was telling to tell his people, you know, when all the coronavirus situation is happening, there are many people who look at what the astrologers have said about these end times. What did Nostradamus said? What are the fortune cookies saying? What are the astrologers saying? What are the medical experts saying? What are the scholars saying? When will this end? But the Bible says, where do you inquire? Are not people supposed to inquire from God? Your hope comes from inquiring differently. All the worldly people inquire from worldly sources. It's very sad to see many people of God, if not most people of God, have all these things in their lives. Zodiac signs, astrology, fortune cookies, astrologers, Reiki healing, you name it. People have done it all. Maybe you may not have done it explicitly, but any time you, you go astray from the word of God, you're deviating towards these things. And the word of God says, where would you inquire? Where should you inquire? It is not from the God of Israel who speaks. And I want to leave this with you, saints of God, especially during these times. We may not know if you're going to come to church again or not. Who knows what happens on Wednesday? Who knows what happens on Thursday? But we have a hope. The Bible says, do not be like worldly people. We live differently. Can you repeat after me? We live differently by fearing differently. Why? Because we do not fear like worldly people. We fear God, only God. Only God all throughout our lives. And then the Bible says, we fear differently because we hope differently. Can you repeat after me? We fear differently because we hope differently. Because our hope is He is the sanctuary. For those who trust in Him, trust in His message, He is the sanctuary. And now why do we hope differently? Because we inquire differently. Can you repeat after me? We hope differently because we inquire differently. Because we inquire from the word of God. As Brother Vaihana has said, some of my very favorite scriptures, he said, in the end times, plagues will come. Nation will rise against nation. You'll hear about wars, rumors about wars. Everything is happening now. What else do you want to know? The word of God has already given you the answers for every situation you're facing. What are you inquiring about? Any inquiry you do about life should be based on the living word of God. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. And when you leave this place tonight, I may not see you again. I'm not saying this with sadness. I'm saying with, with, with gladness, because people of God, when the early church was among the lions, there was no coronavirus. For people of God, it will always be an attack. Never in the child of God's life, you'll have a peaceful life. In, in the sense, there's always an attack upon your life, but be of good cheer. Bible says, he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. And if you believe in his word, you heard in the word of exhortation, and the Lord is speaking to you again, if you believe, you will be established. If you believe, you will be established. Believe in his word. No more fear about anything. No more fear about any virus. Coronavirus may come and go. Something else might come. Because for the generations to come, I, I urge you as a pastor, I request you as a brother, pray for your children. Pray for your children because the days that are going to come are going to be even more evil even more dreadful, even more wicked. Each one of us, every adult, we need to pray for our kids. 
we think we have seen the whole of evil but we have only seen the tip of the iceberg our children are going to see even more worse things but then it's my prayer tonight as a servant of the most high god let each one of us be established by believing in his word by hoping differently by fearing differently and by inquiring differently may the lord bless this word in the hearing of his saints and how many have been blessed this evening how many have been blessed this evening if you can all be on your feet if you can all be on your feet this evening i want you to spend 30 seconds 30 seconds take 30 seconds time any fear in your heart regarding anything in your life tell the lord father forgive me father forgive me father forgive me only fear in my life is to fear you and you alone the only dread i'll be dread of you only and you alone nothing else my lord nothing else the lord is my light and my salvation whom shall i fear he is my light and my salvation whom shall i fear even if a thousand fall at my right hand at my side even if 10000 fall at my right hand no plague no harm shall come close to my dwelling place i know he's more than able he's more than able even if we perish we perish we know that we are called for eternity and I, and pray to him tonight and ask him give me a spirit of wisdom give me a spirit of revelation to understand the seasons and times in these end times what role am i supposed to play as a husband what role am i supposed to play as a wife what is my role as a child what is my role in the church ask the holy spirit to open your eyes of understanding the eyes of your heart of understanding that should be your prayer when you walk out of this place may every fear vanish from your hearts it is not the masks which will protect us it is not the sanitizers which will protect us it is the blood of jesus the blood of jesus the blood of jesus the blood of jesus he rescued us from every powers of darkness the blood of jesus that fights for us speaks for us it is only his blood can protect us our families both physically and spiritually father i glory for your name tonight we exalt your name tonight as your people we come to your presence only fearing you as yes, the world is full of fear the news is full of fear the medical experts always speak about fear there is fear all around but as your people father we rejoice in your presence for you have not given us a spirit of fear but you have given us a spirit of love joy and sound mind sound mind sound mind we rejoice in these end times we rejoice in these end times for everything that we are going through as a body of christ oh lord we rejoice because you are the reason for our joy you are our hope you are our salvation our rock our refuge our fortress nothing happens in our life unless you declare and you decree every hair on our head is numbered you have known us by our name even before we were born you called us you predestined us with a plan and purpose and i pray to not holy spirit each one of us in the sound of my voice will fulfill and function according to the greatness of your calling upon our lives may your confidence may your boldness surround our individual lives may your confidence and your boldness surround our families our children till we see you face to face when our the time comes we will walk in joy in peace and in prosperity i bless your people tonight for everyone who is able to come to church everyone who is watching me online everyone who could not make it father as your servant with the power and authority you have given me i bless your people 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 that there be a shift in the supernatural experiences with you that there be a shift in their walk with you in these end times you are speaking to all of us you are speaking to the whole world for one last time through the situations and i pray that all of us would be your carriers of your presence be your ambassadors be your mouthpieces turning many from darkness to light and as your people as we leave this place oh lord may your presence may your anointing may your grace reside upon our lives upon our families giving you all the glory all the honor all the praise to you this evening for you are the very reason we live you are the very reason we breathe out of you we are nothing absolutely nothing giving you all the glory in jesus most precious name i pray and people of god said people of god said with every eye closed with every head bowed down May the love of God our Father, the grace of His Son Jesus Christ, and the sweet and mighty anointing, fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with God's people for now and forevermore. Amen and amen.